Hello and welcome back. We are playing the NAND game. This game is basically where you build a processor from scratch, starting at the very fundamental parts and building your way up. In the last video we got to the end of logic gates, so I highly recommend that you watch that video first. But that said, let's get on! So next we have to build the operators. Yep, the processor needs to be able to add and subtract. The first task is to add two one-bit numbers together to get a resulting two-bit. Okay. You will need to understand the binary number system to solve this. I mean, we're basically doing binary addition. So we have a total of one there. We're going to get an output of a one. If we get um, two ones, one on the A and one on the B, then that will be a two-bit binary number, and that will basically be two. So one plus one equals one O, which is two. Okay, so this is actually easier than you might think, because if you remember from the last video, that looks rather like um, the truth table for an XOR. And that looks like the truth table for an AND. So what we can do here is for the H, we can plop it in an AND, ba-doink, ba-doink, ba-doink. And then we can have an XOR for the I. And we are done. Ding, ding, ding. Fewest number of components, but it's possible to solve with lower number of NAND gates. Please give me the solution to that in the comments. I would love to see that because I am going to move on. OK, we have three inputs. We have now built an adder which can carry two bits. So to add larger numbers, we need to carry, like you do in um, addition. So how do we do this? This will involve an adder. I mean, it's got to, right? We add these two numbers. So, I mean, I assume that will be the carry bit. We will need to connect whatever that is. So we will need to add these digits. And we can see it's good for um the last three in the truth table is good so far. I think it just needs more. I should not be doing this at 3 a.m. We connect that up together. Wait, we don't do it again, do we? Am I being really thick? Yeah. We don't even have to connect um the H bit. <gasps> I did it. Yes. Oh, glorious. We're moving on. Okay, multi-bit adder. We have to build an adder that carries two bit numbers and one bit carry. Two bit adders can be repeated to make adders work on larger numbers. Okay, this is good to know. So it will hopefully work in a similar way to our um, previous adder. Okay, so we want to... Okay, I'm just going to try this. This is... Yeah, no, this already feels wrong. <laughs> I'm going to get two outputs from three things. Whew. Oh, I'm being thick. Of course, not all these would connect up. You want all the ones that are um, the first unit of the binary number to be connecting up together. So you want to add all of the ones together. That, that looks good. Now, where do I go from there? Oh, well, um, because that will have the that will have the results for the last digit because we've, we've added all the smallest unit um, bits of each number together so we can connect that up to there so we have the um, we have the lowest digits and from there we're going to oh well we're going to want to take um we're just going to want to do the that with the next aren't we and we're just going to want to kind of keep on doing that so now we go to the next ones up. So that is the um, twos. And I believe we will connect this up here. So what we've done, we've added all of the first bits in um, the two bits and the carry digit. Um, we've added them all up. Now we've done the twos. And I can just plop that in there and plop that in there. And I'm done. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, I'm always going to ignore this um, bit. It being possible to solve in a lower total of NAND gates. I would, if any of you in the comments would love to explain how, I would love to see it. So, since we're building a 16-bit processor, we can repeat this component to build a 16-bit adder and add it to your toolbox. Ooh, okay. Okay, so if you don't know what hex is, basically how with binary we had the 1, 2, and 4 kind of units. Here we have 1, 16 and 256. Okay, so we're just adding one to a 16-bit number. So it can ignore um, the carry if the result is larger. 
Is that just is that literally just zero? Yeah, constant zero. Okay. Oh, I've got it. So, what's the opposite of zero? What's the inverse of zero? It's a one. That's how we get our one. And then we just have to add whatever this is and that together. So, I'll plop that in there. And we want this because we're adding that one. And that. And that. Oh, that's magnificent. And then from there, we um, connect up that one because that's the one with the value. And we have our solution, I believe. <gasps> yes, it is right. Oh, I'm actually having so much fun here. I hope this video is remotely enjoyable once I've edited it. So now, build something that subtracts. Right. How enough do we do that? So I'll put a minus p as a 16-bit digit number. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm wondering why they would mention the fact that um, if the result is less than zero, it would end up kind of going round to that number. And I'm just wondering if this invert has anything to do. So like, um, instead of um, subtracting b from a, you add the inverse of b to a, and whether that would give what we want. I think there's something to that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try that. So if we take that, put it there, that's the 16 bit, that's the 16 bit, and plop it there? Is that? No. Do you want to add one to that so it loops over? I mean, let me just try it. So that, 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 that. Ah! Oh. Hooray! So congratulations, you've um, built components for the fundamental arithmetic operations. Modern processors to support much more complex arithmetic, such as multiplication, division, floating point numbers, but in this game we'll keep it simple. Aww, I'm enjoying this though. Right, righty, righty, right. Well, this is an obstacle I didn't expect. How do I actually get on to the next level? Ah, okay. Um, <laughs> how am I having trouble with this? Okay, there we go. Next, we build a component that indicates if a number is zero. This shouldn't be too bad, right? So output should output one if everything is zero. Let's go back to um, the logic gates. So what do we have for outputs one if all the inputs are zero? Well, if you remember, that is the OR gate. So do we just do a bunch of OR gates? I think so. Because, um, yeah, so that will only output one if one of those is one. And we can do the same there. And then we can plop another OR gate in there. For goodness, <laughs> for goodness sake, secretly the hardest bit of the game, connecting the wires. Oh, oh uh, wait a minute. Sorry, we want to inverse that sucker, all right? Yeah, there we go. Four components used, 10 in total. This approach should be trivially expanded. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear how that can be expanded. Oh, this is fun. Okay, you can now design a component that indicates the 16-bit number is negative. Okay, now what do we do that? Well, I guess we'll see. Okay, less than zero outputs one if the input as a 16-bit number is negative. So a number is considered less than zero if bit 15 is one. Okay, oh gosh. <laughs> right, Um. so bit 15. Well, okay, so it has to... Um. Uh, let's just read this bit. Bits are numbered from right to left. Okay, so bit 15 is the leftmost, so I mean, yeah, they kind of say that already. But yeah, so I mean, hook that up, and then that will just have our number in for all the bits out like that. And we're seeing if the 15 bit is a 1. So surely we just connect that up there. Hey! Oh my goodness, arithmetic's done. See me next video, and you can watch me do the plumbing. Alright, bye-bye. I'm going to bed. Like and subscribe and all that rubbish.